a recording. Yeah, well, let's turn the second recorder to back up. <laughs> exactly. This is craziness. One can't have too many backups. Um, we'll go ahead and get started and hope for the best and hope that the go to meeting uh, powers that be are, uh, are working for us today. Well, they're uh, tech support, but it's timely and workable, so we're good. I exactly. Think. All right, so today we have our um, free webinar for aviation sales and marketing professionals, and today um, we are talking about the awesome power of snail mail, and we're really glad that you're with us today. Um, while we're going through this, if you have questions, there is a question box on your control panel. Um, there's a couple of places in the webinar that we're going to be answering questions, and you know, there's always quite a few of them, so we try to... Uh, lump those together so you can ask a question at any time, but we may not answer it right away But that doesn't mean we're ignoring you, right? Ask as in write it in the question box. <laughs> exactly. That's absolutely true Okay, so um, here we go All right, this webinar is for you if you sell a product or service in the aviation industry um, We're going to go through a couple of different scenarios So if you sell B2B, you know, meaning business to business or business to consultant or business to consumer, excuse me um, Or uh, most especially to a select audience Most of us have very specific people that we want to sell to Our products and services are not for everyone uh, So we want to be very specific with our marketing And uh, the last one is if you want to sell more stuff, right? Absolutely. Okay, so if all of those things apply to you, then you are in the right place, and uh, this will be a very worthwhile hour for you. So I'm Paula Williams. I'm John Williams. And we are ABCI, and ABCI's mission is to help all you ladies and gentlemen out there in the aviation world sell more products and services. Absolutely. Now, some of the material that we're going to be going over might be familiar to you depending on where you went to school <laughs> and what books you've read and other kinds of things. These are some of our favorites, uh, and we try to attribute wherever we can, but sometimes we have an idea that uh, stuck in our head and we're not sure where we got it. Most likely it is from one of these places, right? Yep, but we also have uh, experience and numbers to back up what we've done. Absolutely. Um, okay, so please do two things. The first thing is to uh, make sure that you have a pen. Uh, there is a worksheet in your um, GoToWebinar control panel. Um, if you look under uh, handouts, there are two. One is going to be the slides for this presentation, and the other is going to be a worksheet. You may or may not want the slides, um, you know, depending on whether or not you care about the statistics and other things that we're going through. But what you really want is the worksheet. Uh, and the worksheet is basically has a bunch of blanks in it that you're going to be filling out as we go through uh, some of the exercises in this webinar. So you're going to walk away with a complete campaign that you can go ahead and use, or at least uh, your ideas captured for a complete campaign, right? That's assuming that you follow along and fill in the blanks. Exactly. So that's what really makes this a good use of your time, is that you'll walk away with something that you can do yourself or you can hand to your staff and say, here's what we're doing, go for it, you know? Yep. Okay, as <laughs> if you're lucky enough to have staff, <laughs> right? Uh, yep. I think that things are finally stabilizing here, so let's just continue. Okay, good. So today we're going to learn how direct mail compares with other advertising. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, using direct mail in a campaign, uh, and we're going to go through an actual example of a postcard campaign. And as always, uh, you know, with last month's campaign that we did as a sample, we reported our numbers after the fact. Uh, so this is a campaign that we are actually going to run, and we're going to report the numbers to you uh, at the end of the month or in our next webinar. Um, or you know, you can find them on our website if we don't have time or if it's not all that relevant. So. Um, those are all, this is real information that we're really using in our real business. This is actually how we get things done and how we stay profitable. So this is not textbook <laughs> BS, right? <laughs> or business school stuff here. This is the way it really works. <laughs> yeah, or business school BS, exactly. Okay, so without further ado, the awesome power of snail mail, right? Yep. Okay, a lot of people think of us as kind of the social media people in aviation. Uh, we do a lot more social media than almost every other marketing company that there is out there, but we are advocates of what works, and 
in most cases, combining uh, social media or digital marketing or any of the other methods that we use that are more modern with something older really gives us the benefits of both. And there are some things that Snail Nail does better than anything else. Um, we did a real quick Facebook poll. This shows how nerdy we are. Um, and you know we didn't uh, spend a lot of time on this. We just sent it out really quickly. Um, most of the respondents use snail mail for personal mail, follow-up, and thank you letters. That was the, the most common response um, and other things. But uh, And that is also a great use, but that's more of a sales function than a marketing function. So we're not really going to be talking about that a whole lot today. We're mostly going to be talking about how to sell something to an existing customer rather than um, thank you notes and other things like that, right? Yep. Okay, cool. So uh, diving in with the numbers, why snail mail? Why not? <laughs> why not? <laughs> okay. Um, you'll notice here that there is something that outperforms, uh, well, <laughs> direct mail does pretty good um, at 3.7% response. And this is to um, a house list, meaning a warm list. And we're going to talk about some examples of how you can get a warm list or how you can get a house list. But uh, 3.7% doesn't stink. That's actually the best of any uh, method other than one, right? Yep. Telephone. And telephone is great. I personally can't stand it. I, <laughs> I do sales calls because I have to, not because I want to. Uh, and I usually use uh, telephone in combination with something else. So I send someone something and then I use a phone call to follow up. In other words, what you're saying is you don't do cold calls. I don't do cold calls. <laughs> do not ever do cold calls. Um, and that's partly just my personality. I feel really weird on the phone with somebody that doesn't know me for that first 15, 20 seconds of who the heck are you anyway. Um, I feel that they're kind of intrusive and, and not really helpful. So um, some people have a great style for the phone, and if you can find a fabulous telephone salesperson, they are worth their weight in gold. Oh, yeah, because those who ask them close, you're golden. Absolutely. But even so, they can only sell to one person at a time, and it may take four or five callbacks to get past voicemail and gatekeepers and everything else. So these other methods, you really do need to use them. And the two best, of course, are direct mail. Um, you know, house list is obviously better than a cold list, but cold list doesn't stink. Right? Even the sales guys that we know that are outstanding mm -hmm. much prefer to have inbound leads that are warm they can talk to. Absolutely. So that's going to actually improve any of these by using it in combination with something else. And we're going to be talking about some of those combinations like uh, you know, direct mail and email, uh, direct mail and social media. Uh, direct mail and a phone call, you know, all of these things. If you combine them, you get much better results, right? Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. So moving along, um, let's talk about cost per acquisition in dollars. So, you know, down here we've got cost you nothing. Up here we've got cost you $50, right? <laughs> That's per act, per, uh, per customer, per, per customer. new customer, okay. exactly. So, um the most expensive here is internet display. This was actually kind of surprising to me. Yeah, uh, well, now wait a minute. We mm -hmm. have some interesting things there. What the mm -hmm. world? I mean, I've been working with you for a while. Okay. But I have not heard the term internet display with respect to marketing. Okay. So I guess that means I'm either uneducated, haven't been paying attention, or just don't know. <laughs> well, it's just a word, and this uh, information is actually coming from the Direct Marketing Association. Um, and so their term for internet display is things that display on your screen when you go to a website. So, for example, you go to the Wall Street Journal, which I know you do, and uh, there are ads on the side of the page. <clears throat> or when you're going through an article and you flip from one page to the next, you'll see um, something pop up in that space. That's a display ad. Oh. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, yeah, cool. That's cool. Which are great, you know, and sometimes it's worth it. But if you want to pay forty-five and a half dollars for a lead, you better be darn sure you close that lead, right? Yeah, that, or else your uh, product is costing thousands. <laughs> well, and actually, it, this is actually per acquisition. I'm sorry, not for leads. So if you're paying forty-five point five dollars for a lead and you're selling them something worth a thousand dollars, you could do that all day long and still yeah, make money. Yes. Right. Yep. So, you know, that's good stuff, but 
if you can get your leads or get your customers less expensively, why wouldn't you, right? Yep. Okay. Um, you know, mobile and social has uh, the lowest, actually email has the very lowest, but it's also the least credible. Um, so, you know, a lot of things that are sold by email are, you know, things that are not things that you'd want to be associated with aviation. Um, so, you know, once again, you can use combinations and get the high credibility um, with a low acquisition cost, right? Yep. So, never mind. <laughs> so, Go what on. we're working on here is basically <laughs> we want the best of both worlds. We want everything, right? We want um, really great response rates and we want really low acquisition cost. Well, of course. I mean, if you're a commercial fisherman, you want all the hooks and water you can get with all kinds of different bait. Exactly. So, you know, there's no reason you can't use more than one of these things um, again. And we're going to get into some specifics about that, but we wanted to lay down some some statistics to, to show you where <laughs> what's going on in the world first before we do sort that. Sort of infrastructure so we can talk about. Absolutely. Okay. So now let's talk about... The different kinds, you know, when you get into direct mail, some kinds of direct mail are more effective than others, right? Yes, they are. Okay. And that was a surprise to me, but okay. Mm. Okay. So we know this, oversized envelopes, because this is what we get and this is what we send all the time, is those um, USPS flat rate uh, envelopes or the DHL envelopes or the FedEx envelopes, other things that look important because they're in a full letter-sized deal, you know, an 8.5 by 11 or 9 by 12 cardboard doohickey, right? Mm -hmm. In fact, we get those from Chase Bank. Uh, our mortgages, or the mortgage for our house is through Chase Bank, and they send us one of these just about every three weeks, maybe. three weeks or so, <laughs> trying to get us to refinance uh, before interest rates go up. Um, obviously, it's working for them, and uh, you know, it also works for us. So, oversized envelopes is a good one. Um, postcards very effective and that is what we're going to be using for our example today because we used oversized envelopes in our last campaign right right well postcards I have personal experience with that I would I guess I would have been considered a warm lead since I mm -hmm. talked to uh, Cessna but they sent me a postcard I guess once roughly a month for about four or five months and it's on the fifth one I actually went over and bought an airplane mm -hmm. <laughs> so but it, it wasn't that I didn't want to buy it. It was just a life kept getting in the way. I mean, you know, you forget where the postcard is. You're busy. You say, oh, man, I'll get that Monday. Yeah, or your and money is directed elsewhere that month or whatever the situation whatever. is. Yeah. But it took uh, four or five before I actually got the first airplane. Right. The interesting thing about postcards also is that they are the least expensive form of direct mail. So that's another really great reason that we're using them in today's example, right? Yes. Okay. Dimensional mail. This is one of my favorites also. What this means is it's not flat, right? So anything that is not flat is dimensional mail. Well, no, wait a <laughs> minute. We just use a fancy word for it, right? So anything but a postcard. <clears throat> no. I mean, because a flat, an envelope an is env not dimensional. Okay. An envelope is flat. <laughs> I guess More dimensional what you put in than it. that. More unflat than that. So, uh -huh. you know, if you put something lumpy in it, like you put a, a pen or a, um, you know, a, something that, you know, they pick it up and they feel a dimension other than flatness, other than paper. Then it counts. Then it counts as dimensional mail. Um, also, packages are dimensional mail. So if you use the USPS flat rate, small, medium, or large boxes, uh, those are always good. Or you go to the UPS store, they have some really nice flat rate options as well. Um, so dimensional mail is very effective. Catalogs, um, a lot of people are getting away from catalogs, uh, but you know, if you go by um, the Direct Marketing Association or GKIC, which is another group that we're, we're members of, uh, the people who are sending catalogs, there are fewer of them, but they are selling more and they're actually getting a much better response rate than they used to because there are so few catalogs uh, still being produced, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you've got something, you could produce a catalog of services or something like that. That's so really let's cool. digress for a moment. Okay. Dimensional. Would a trash can be dimensional? Yes, it would. <laughs> and actually, you can take a coconut and put a stamp on it and write an address on it and send that through the mail. Right. I mean, you know, you'd have to make sure that it meets all the rest of the criteria for your campaign. Otherwise, people would go, why am I getting this coconut? But that would qualify as dimensional mail. 
you can be as weird as you want with these things, and you know sometimes the weirder the best, better. Okay, so questions about why direct mail? I'm sure one of the first questions is going to be why would you send a coconut? <laughs> well, no, um, uh, okay. no, but uh, in uh, in our marketing group, they told about a guy who had been sending direct mail to this particular company. I don't know, four or five or six months. So finally, he got upset. And he, the sales guy did, and he sent him a trash can with a note saying, mm -hmm. this is to put all that stuff I've been sending you in. Exactly. But he got the sale. And he got a call. Yeah, he got an appointment, which is what he wanted. Anyway, the first okay. question is, uh, oh, I think you already covered this, but do it again. It's what is display advertising? What is display advertising? Okay, somebody had the same question you did. Uh-huh. Um, display advertising just basically means anything that is not text advertising uh, on the internet. So that could be, um, you know, a video. Uh, it could be the little Geico dude that marches across your your screen. Um, it could be a square, you know, with a picture in it, or you know, anything like that would be visual. But it's not. But it's on a site you're visiting, and it's not germane to the site that you're visiting. Um, not directly related is sponsored content. Right. Okay. okay. Yeah, it is advertising. Okay. Um, and <laughs> cool. Are there ways to improve social media advertising to get better results? Yes, of course there are. Um, but if you're starting from an average that is better, there's less work that you have to do. So um, you know that's why we always like to start with something that, that has a good response rate. And see if we can improve on that. Um, you know, if there is some reason you can't do direct mail, uh, you know, you're working internationally or you don't have postal addresses or something like that, then, you know, of course you have to work within the constraints that you have. But if direct mail is an option for you, then you're in the right class. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> you know, you need to consider using it really. Um, okay. okay. And uh, this. Currently, the last question I think you already talked about mm -hmm. some options or examples for dimensional mail. Yeah, um, yeah, options for dimensional mail. Of course, those flat rate boxes are really good. Um, we love doing candy as an excuse to make it dimensional mail uh, because candy is fairly inexpensive and everybody likes it. <laughs> and, uh, and if you do it in conjunction with Valentine's Day. Halloween. Halloween, right? Exactly. There you go. Okay. Um, and there's other holidays that you can send candy. I mean, actually, or no holiday at all, you can send candy. Um, you can send some really high quality, um, high end uh, things in the mail, and you know, candy is really one of the cheapest options, even if you're going high end. Or in fact, one of our clients says sent frozen salmon. He said, yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, and he's a um, an aircraft broker in. Uh, Washington in Seattle, and so people remember, you know, he's the broker from Seattle because he sends frozen salmon through the mail uh, to people, you know, who make referrals and other kinds of things, and people remember that that's the guy, you know, that sends the, he's fishing for, for referrals, right? Yeah, right. Okay. Cool. Other questions uh, about uh, direct mail? yet. Okay. We'll move on then. Okay, so now we're going to get into the guts of an actual campaign. Now we know why we're doing snail mail, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so every campaign has three elements, right? Yep, and there they are, the list, the offer, and the presentation. I exactly. hate reading slides. I know, but some people may be <laughs> listening but not watching, so uh, we need okay, to be complete. <laughs> All right, so warm lists perform better than cold lists. So what do we mean by a warm list and how do you get one? Um, the first thing is you can use a lead magnet, and there's a tip sheet on our website that has 17 different ideas for uh, lead magnets. And you know, if you go to ABCI's website and just click on our um, tip sheet tab on the side, uh, one of the ones that you're going to see is 17 ideas for lead magnets or, or calls to action. Um, and that can include things like uh, you know, tip sheets, ebooks, newsletters. Um, other things. It has to be something that has a high perceived value uh, that people want from you, that they're willing to give you their address and um, <laughs> ideally their postal address for. So, you know, a book is a great, uh, great lead magnet. Um, another thing that you can do is uh, you, ha you can have a warm list of old customers and referrals. Um, 
a lot of people forget that their old customers are actually more likely to buy from them uh, for repeat purchases than, than new customers. So, you know, certainly don't forget that. Uh, also, people that you've met at trade shows or networking events or speaking engagements or other kinds of things, you've got that box of, of business cards that uh, you don't know what to do with, here's what you do with it, right? That's right. Okay. Fantastic. So those are warm lists, and those are better. Uh, remember they had a, um, I think, a 3%? 3.7. 3.7% uh, response rate. To direct mail. Right, exactly. And cold lists are less um, responsive, but you know this is a great way to reach out to people that you haven't met before. And one of the reasons we really like using postcards is because you're not going to run afoul of the Can Spam Act. Uh, you're not going to end up with a fine or a cease and desist letter <laughs> uh, because you sent an email uh, unsolicited or to somebody who forgot uh, that they subscribed to your email list. Yeah, just remember the uh, the Can Spam Act is not too bad. Mm -hmm. Quote in the U.S. and Canada, it's just disgusting. Exactly, and I you mean, may it's not probably know. a good thing, but but what I mean, it's very expensive if they nail you up there. Right, exactly. And you never know. Right. Whether I mean, you can't tell anymore if it's a Gmail address and an address, and you and you just go blasting it out there. How would you know whether they're in Canada or not? So, yeah, you can't. Um, this way, you don't have to worry about this. There is nobody that it is illegal to send mail to, right? Mm -hmm. um, there's no do not call problems. There's no do not email problems or, or any of those kinds of things. You can send mail to anybody without any legal problems. Um, some places that you can get good lists, uh, some of our favorites are AirPAC. Uh, Shandi at AirPAC is very, very helpful, really um, yeah. good at getting you what you need. Uh, uh, Paul Cardarelli at JetNet, uh, also one of our favorite people. He can really help you figure out what you need uh, as far as a list goes. And these are, are places where you can get AirPAC um, gives you um, people uh, who have specific ratings and other kinds of things with the FAA. And they're really good at locating people. JetNet is probably better at locating planes. So if you have a list of um, G450s that are 10 years or older, you know, or something like that, if that's the list that you're looking for, then, uh, then JetNet can help you with that. The FAA website, um, of course, that's where you can get raw data, but I don't recommend that for the faint of heart. Uh, <laughs> you really need a database expert in order to be able to get anything out of that and make sense of it. Uh, so AirPack or JetNet are our favorite ways of getting this type of data. And the more specific you are, the better, because you want uh, people who your offer is going to be really attractive to, right? Yep. And even then, when you mm -hmm. dump a thousand records out of either one of those databases, you probably ought to have a utility to uh, further refine it because exactly. it becomes like big data. You need to put in parameters and what you want. It, they do a fairly good job, mm -hmm. but then when you get done with what they can do, you may want to refine it even more and you can't do it with their utilities. Right. So then you get a spreadsheet in Excel and then you go crazy with Excel sorting and deduping and resorting and deduping and all that stuff. Or if you get lucky and have somebody like me that knows the utility from IBM days. Yeah. <laughs> John handles our lists and does a really good job of, of getting down to the nuts and bolts of who we really want to mail to. And we like tiny lists, um, very small, very specific lists, because then we spend less money uh, on offers, and also we're making very specific offers that get better response rates. And we still get the same or better mm -hmm. response rates. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Association lists, um, places like NBAA, um, EAA, AOPA, other places will sometimes rent you uh, or sell you a list of their membership or of some specific type of their members, uh, different company types or... Uh, Does NBAA do that? Yeah, they do. Now, they yeah, there was a time when they didn't. Right. They're actually going through a third party now, a list handling company. Um, that uh, does marketing and things like that. So it's expensive, and they're uh, also very restrictive about the way that they do it. So, you know, they may or may not let you, you know, they want a, a sample mail piece and all kinds of other things so that, you know, you're not spamming their members. They want their members to have a really good experience. Uh, and so they're, 
there's a lot of rules about uh, how and when and where and why you can use their list. That's and cool. it's going to cost you money, <laughs> like a ton of money. Um, another very inexpensive way to do this is EDDM. Um, that's Every Door Direct Mail. And so if you're a charter broker, for example, and you're looking for people in your city that have a particular income level, you can uh, go on the USPS.gov website and you can look for zip codes and sub-zip codes, which are sometimes very small, that have the highest per capita income, as an example. Uh, and you know that's a really good way to get uh, very inexpensive uh, direct mail, uh, and it's not even a list. They just drop it at every address in that right. subzip code, right? Okay. Um, another one is uh, list brokers. Now I made a call this morning to a list broker and ended up getting about six calls from different salespeople that work for that list broker uh, at the same time, you know, asking me what I wanted and how I wanted it and everything else. So you know, I just got totally overwhelmed with phone calls for about 45 minutes. So these guys are super aggressive, uh, and if you dip your foot into this pool uh, and you find a good list broker, that's great. Uh, but you know, usually they start at about uh, most of their limits are about 2,000 uh, and up. Uh, we like smaller lists than that. We like to do 100, 200, 300, 500 people who have very specific characteristics. And if you do choose to do this sort of thing, you need to build your house list from it. Exactly. That's absolutely right. So cold leads, you might want to do that. You know, just for the purpose of turning them into warm leads. So then you're able to send them mail whenever you want to. Okay, so we have a list, now we need an offer, right? That would be a good thing. What are we gonna offer these people? So you wanna look at your list, and I love to you know, print it out, and especially if it's a warm list, they're usually people that I know. Uh, so I wanna think about you know, what can I offer these people that is really simple and really easy to understand. Uh, I don't wanna offer them something big or complicated. Uh, in our last campaign, we offered, um, you know, our offer was multiple thousands of dollars. Uh, that's in the one that we did in our February webinar, uh, and the results of that are on our website. And what I learned uh, from that, actually, I knew it already, but we did it anyway. <laughs> what you reinforced in your brain. <laughs> is that it takes longer than 30 days to close a multiple thousand dollar sale, right? Of course. It just does. Um, and, so, and as a matter of fact, the more multiples of thousand or hundred thousand or millions, the longer it takes. Exactly, because the more people have to be involved in the decision, uh, you know, the more you have to wait for a budget to become available and other kinds of things. So, you know, especially if this is the first or second time you've you've talked to these folks, you want to make your offer really, really simple. And we like to use the example of the monkey paw, right? Mm -hmm. Um, if you have ever been on a cruise ship or, um, you know, been on a tour of the USS Missouri in, in Hawaii or, you know, any of those things, you see those big old ropes that are like as big around as a, um, a person's thigh, right? Mm -hmm. um, those don't move very much or very fast, right? You just can't pick it up and throw it over to the shore. <laughs> exactly. What they do um, instead is they have a light little cord that they connect to this knot. Uh, this knot is called a monkey paw, and they throw the throw the ball. You know, basically throw the monkey paw to somebody on the shore who can catch it, and then you know they can draw over the big old rope. So what this metaphor means in marketing is you can think about this as your first sale to a new customer is much easier if it's something smaller and simpler. You know, low risk and low cost to you and to them. Uh, once you've made that sale, then you can build your um, relationship with them and learn more about them, build trust over time, uh, and things like that. And then you can start offering your big rope <laughs> and saying, you know, here are some more things that we could offer you and more ways that we can get involved with your business uh, that are uh, more helpful, more useful, more profitable for everyone, but, you know, it's not something you want to do on day one. Right. So start with a monkey paw. Um, all right. So also thinking about your offer, you want to think about, you know, what do your customers always ask for more of? Do they ask for more training time or more uh, documentation or more um, hours or more, you know, whatever it is that you offer? 
Um, and what can you offer in addition to your current product or service? You know, if they're coming in for a maintenance uh, procedure, could you also offer detailing as an example? Um, things like that that you can add on. Uh, and what, do quest what questions do customers always ask? You know, could you put together some kind of a consultation or a free installation or, or something like that that's going to make your product simpler and easier to use, right? Yes. Okay. So those are things to think about with an offer. And uh, Sometimes you want to do a joint venture with somebody. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. In fact, we've seen those be very um, successful. So fact, One of our clients up in Northern California owns a, an FBO on a runway, and they mm -hmm. also have nice little cottages on the beach. Right. <laughs> they uh, will take care of pilots, et cetera, when they fly in and buy fuel there. Exactly. So they fly in their, um, their customers that are going to do a Napa Valley um, excursion of some kind. The pilots get to stay in a nice little cottage on the beach. Of course the pilots are going to recommend this, this <laughs> FBO, right? You think? Oh, yeah. So that's a really beautiful place. That's uh, Wilna's Sea Cottage and uh, uh, Air Galore, which is actually in Little River, California. So uh, Mary uh, Fairbanks is, is one of our, our clients that does a really great job of this, right? Absolutely. Okay. So um, you have your worksheet. Hopefully you've printed that out. Um, the next thing you want to do um, as you're, you're thinking about this is you want to think through multiple steps. Uh, multiple presentation steps. And just like John said at the beginning of the program, when he received a postcard, the first one he lost, and the second one he lost, and the third one he probably stuck to his bulletin board and forgot about for three months. Well, it was on the desk. Yeah, <laughs> in the pile. <laughs> okay. When so, I got the last one, I said, this is enough. I'm going to call these guys now while I'm thinking about it. Exactly. So, you know, really this is an exercise in hitting the right person at the right time and also providing some kind of urgency for this. Okay, so the example um, that we're going to use today, and you can make your own, uh, you know, make it something that, that makes sense for your product or service. So the first step in our presentation of this offer to our list is going to be a postcard and an email. And we're going to do that on March 15th. Wait a minute. You mean postcard and email or postcard with a follow-up email in a week? Or what do you mean by a postcard plus email? We're going to send a postcard and we're going to send an email. Same time? Same time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, they're going to get the email and they may ignore it. They're going to get the postcard and they may ignore it. But it's going to start to... It goes um, into the back of the brain. Exactly. There's a psychological thing that happens when things get repeated over and over and over again. And, and Frank Luntz actually has a really great book about um, word usage and how in political campaigns they use particular words. And when they use those particular words over and over and over again, they become more credible. Uh, now, I think they're using that power for evil. Right? <laughs> But you can use that power for good. Well, you can use it for marketing. Some people think that's evil. Exactly. Because um, it is psychological. Yeah. Um, when people see things over and over again, especially in multiple formats, it becomes more credible. So they see the email. They may ignore it and probably will, given the response rates to email, right? Mm -hmm. They see the postcard and they ignore it and probably will, given the response rates to email, right? Yeah. Or for postcards. But that's the first or the second time they've seen it. Exactly. Okay, so then uh, on March 29th, same thing, except we're also going to add social media. Is that the retargeting social media or just a plain social media ad? Oh, excuse um, me, ad. Okay, for the purpose of this campaign, it does not matter. Um, the one thing that does matter is you want to make sure that the right people see it. And there are some ways that you can target this particular list. So you can upload this list into Facebook and say, I want these people to be hit with this ad. Here's five bucks, make it happen. <laughs> and Facebook book will do that for you. Okay, the other social media are not quite so... Forthcoming. <laughs> <laughs> accommodating, but there are ways to make sure that the right people see it. The other way is just to blanket the heck out of social media. Um, you'll end up paying more money, but you can do it, or you can do it without uh, paying for these ads at all. You just put them on your social media feed. People will either see them or they won't. Um, once again, all of these are kind of 
hit or miss. You know, some people will never open your email. Some people will never get their mail because they're out of town during this particular time. Yeah, but when you post social media, is they're going to see them or not? They will see them at least long enough to get rid of. Well, some people on your list aren't even going to have social media. Oh, that, oh, yeah, yeah, but I mean, I'm just talking about the social media piece. Exactly. Okay, so the more the better. Okay, next step, um, another postcard, another email, another social media post. Okay, and that will be April 5th. Cool. Cool. Um, and then another postcard, another email, another social media on um, April 14th. Uh, April 14th is the last day for our particular offer. So one thing that we haven't talked about is urgency. Uh, in your offer. You want to have something that has some reason that they need to reply by a certain date. And the reason is because if it doesn't have any kind of urgency, it just goes on the bottom of the pile. And like your uh, Cessna example, it doesn't ever get done until you are darn good and ready, and that might be... Later than you, the sales guy, want. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, so my deadline for this this offer is April 15th, so the last time I'm going to send anything and I can't guarantee that a postcard is going to get there on April 14th so I'm going to use email and social media because that I have control over the timing of right true okay so far so good yep okay so that is a campaign that is the the basics of it now we're going to show you the actual pieces that go into our campaign and hopefully that will give you guys some ideas about how to do this in your campaign but let's start with questions I'm sure there are some I've heard yeah. Uh, can't you just send a damn postcard and be done with it? <laughs> <laughs> can't you just send a damn postcard and be done with it? Um, don't you, you wish? Don't you wish? Um, most of the people that I know that have sent a postcard and been done with it, it has not worked very well. Um, they've gotten one or two responses. Um, it's been far less than even the. Um, you have to remember, you know, the direct mail association. These are professionals. Okay, these are not people who are casually um, messing around with marketing. These are people who are in the profession, and they are getting less than a 1% response rate on a cold list. Yep. Okay? If you want to improve on that, you've got to do better than that. Um, you have to combine it with other things. You have, to Im you have to narrow down your list. You have to do all of the things that we're talking about. The harder you work, the better it's going to work. And if there were an easy button, everybody would be doing it, right? Of course. Okay, so I don't mean to chew you out. You know, there's no judgment here. <laughs> you can ask any question you like. But um, if if you could just send an email and be done with it, there would be no reason for us to be in business, right? That's right. Um, it is harder than anybody suspects to, to sell products and services. And more time consuming. In the aviation industry, and that's why we have a job. Um, so it's not necessarily the way it should be, but that's the way it is. Okay, next question <laughs> off my soapbox. <laughs> Uh huh. Uh, let's see. Can you uh, provide examples of offers for an FBO mm. uh, and another one for an MRO? Okay, so we have two questions about um, examples of offers. Good questions. Um, okay, so let's start with the FBO. Um, we gave one that was Mary um, and her cottages, um, and that doesn't necessarily have to be something free. It can be something at a discount. Uh, so if you're an FBO, what people are looking for most is convenience. So if you can set something up so that people get their rental car, their lodging, uh, dinner reservations, you know, kind of a concierge service, uh, some of the FBOs go way out of their way to be really accommodating, and those are the ones that uh, I think do a really nice job. So you can put together some kind of a program, especially if you know who this person is, um, a custom program for them where you get them everything that they want and take all the hassle out of it. And I wouldn't even offer a discount because people don't re no. really care about that. They care about time and convenience um, when you're talking FBOs, right? Yes. What else would you like when you go into an FBO, John? Well, I like service. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay, and most people do. Most people in your, your demographic do. Um, and that, that doesn't mean put a red carpet out. What that does mean that when we get marshaled in, then you know when we get parked that there's going to be a car waiting right there. Mm -hmm. And the FO is always got to do is say, oh, we want fuel. Mm -hmm. 
only this one out? Yep. And they're good. Right. So how they could advertise that as an offer, um, you know, Special Services Corporation in Greenville uh, does a really nice job of taking care of people. And what they could do is, you know, one of the things that they mention in some of their advertising is that they will uh, get your car washed uh, while you're on your trip. They will get your dry cleaning done. They will do other kinds of things while um, they're flying you around uh, doing a charter trip. Now that's an originating FBO. I was thinking about <clears throat> us flying in somewhere, but that's okay. Both things, both work. Yeah, exactly. And we're thinking about offers that people could make on a postcard. So, um, you know, if you detail out, here are the services that we provide. Um, you know, that really makes people relax and think, okay, these guys have got my back. Um, and next time I do a trip, I'm going to rely on them because they take care of everything for me. Yep. That works. Okay. So that's FBO. The other one was MRO. MRO, okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. So a maintenance organization. Some of the things that they could offer, um, <clears throat> one example that we mentioned before is while something is in for a phase service, you could have it detailed at the same time. Uh, have people working on the inside of the airplane while you're working on the, uh, the engine. Depending on the MRO <clears throat> yeah. and their personnel and their abilities, I know of at least one that will actually come out, pick up your airplane, fly it into the MRO, do what's requested, and put it right back in the same chocks where it came from. And you walk out there sometime later, and it looks like it never moved, but it's complete. Yeah, and you've got the paperwork in your logbook, right. and you're good. Yeah. It's all done. Absolutely. So service, once again, um, always a big deal in aviation. People, aviation customers are, are in it for the service. Um, there was another one for copywriting. Okay, so if you do aviation copywriting, what is a, um, a service that you could offer or a, an offer that you could make? Um, you could say, you know, if you're going to do a um, article for somebody, and this is what we do, of course. <laughs> if you do an article for somebody, you'll also um, submit it as a press release to your network. Um, you know, there's lots of ways that you could add value uh, to something uh, for that reason. So, good question. And that was the last. I think we got a couple of copywriters in the <clears throat> audience today. Okay, so carrying on. We're done. Yes. Okay, cool. All right, so these are the actual examples from the campaign that we're going to run. And so some of you in the studio audience might actually get some of these uh, postcards and things. <laughs> then you'll know that you're on our list for this particular campaign, and we can talk about how we selected you if you're interested in, in being nosy. So, exactly. Okay, so this is a postcard, um, and this is a eight and a half. Front by. <laughs> Easy for me to say. That's the front of the postcard. Yeah, and this is a jumbo postcard, so you can't tell. This is eight and a half by five and a half, so it's a little bit bigger than the average postcard. We found that those get better response rates, especially in aviation, because we got we're working with visual people. We like to have nice photographs and and other things on them, right? Exactly. Okay, so a um, couple of things here. We have a headline. Uh, notice this because you're going to see it in many, many different places. We did the copywriting once, and we're going to use it a million times in this um, in this campaign. So we have a headline and we have a tagline. Uh, sales not taking off. You can keep struggling on your own, or you can become part of the synergy of the smartest sales and marketing professionals in the industry, right? Absolutely. Okay. So um, that's the headline. People turn it over, and it looks like this. And, uh, you know, once again, we've got some very specific wording about um, this is an exclusive aviation-specific relevant facts, findings, and examples that discover the synergy, cooperation, and help among the insiders is even more valuable. So um, how do we add urgency? We tell people that they can choose a bonus. Um, and this is a way also that we're going to further segment this list. Some people are more interested in the nuts and bolts of marketing, and some people are more interested in the sales process or sales coaching, which is another service that we offer. So when they um, go to this landing page, they'll be able to select either search engine optimization or you know, a sales process evaluation and coaching. And depending on which of those they choose, we know a little bit more about them. Um, so we tell them specifically what they need to do to get that bonus. 
um, where to go to, to make that happen, they can either call or go to a landing page, which is not done yet, so if you try that, it's not going to work yet. <laughs> I've got till March 15th, so <laughs> not everything happens at the same time, right? Um, and the other really important thing about the back side of a postcard is we want to leave room, uh, and this is actually bigger than it used to be. I've noticed that the post office is encroaching this direction, um, so sometimes they'll overlay some of your stuff. Um, so I usually leave two-thirds of the postcard blank on the bottom uh, section, right? Yeah, that's just like the addressing schemes and what they call the Internet, too. It's just about double the length. Right, exactly. Okay, so that's the back of our postcard. And you'll notice we're going to use the same back of the postcard every single time. All we changed was the picture on the front. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you get good copywriting done, and it is well worth the money. All right, we're also going to do a social media post, um, and this is going to have the same copy um, you know, same headline on the post and then copy below the post. We're going to use this on Facebook, Twitter, uh, LinkedIn, and Instagram. And Instagram we're only testing this year. We don't have any numbers that would indicate that this is um, worth doing. So I don't know that I would necessarily recommend this unless you're already on Instagram yet. We're testing it. So we'll tell you <clears throat> after, this, uh, after this year, you know, how, what kind of results we got from Instagram. And we're going to link to our web page. And the web page um, is pretty much the anchor of all of this. So we also send an email. Same image, uh, same headlines, and uh, same copy, except that we're going to have more details. So you notice this is longer. Um, and why is that? I don't know. Why is that? <laughs> because you can only fit so much on a postcard. <laughs> and social media has, you know, certain uh, limitations of how much copy you can use. So we can put more um, on our email than we had in our, um, in our postcard. But we want this to look very familiar. So when people open this, it's going to look familiar. Then they're going to get their postcard, and they're gonna, it's going to jog something in their brain, even if... Uh, they just barely notice it because they're doing things with their other hand and they're multitasking and, you know, all kinds of things. So, um, you know, they go out to get their mail <laughs> or they open their email and they've got five other windows open. They're going to notice something familiar about this, whether or not they're actually interested yet. Okay? Um, also, we're going to have make it really easy for them to respond. They can call or they can reply for more information. Okay, um, and all of this goes to a landing page. And on the landing page, of course, we've got even more information. Um, and this is just part of the landing page. It actually goes on for quite some time uh, because we go into great detail about um, our insider circle. We have testimonials from uh, current customers. We have lots of, of good stuff in there um, that tell people everything they want to know because obviously they're not going to get as much information as they want from the email or the postcard. So the purpose of everything we do, email, postcard, uh, social media, everything leads, all roads lead to this web page, right? Absolutely. Okay. That keeps it simple for us. All right. So same thing, March 29th. You'll notice this is exactly the same postcard, but with a different photograph behind it. Um, so this saves us a lot of money um, on and a lot of time on writing new things and everything else, but it should um, jog their memory because the words are the same. It's just going to make them hopefully sit up and take notice and say, oh, this is not exactly the same. I need to look at this again. Okay, so we're playing all these psychological games with people <laughs> for good, not evil, right? Um, which, once is again, what, which is what you need to do to make sales. Exactly. We're going to put this on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Instagram, um, and you know we're going to link that to the same web page. So only one web page, but three different postcards. Um, same email, same copy on our email, uh, but a different picture, right? Okay. Um, third postcard, April sixth. Um, this time we're getting actually closer to the deadline on this, and so we're going to use our best uh, image. You know, of all of the images that we went through for this, which were a lot, 
<laughs> and you know, liked some, disliked some, and everything else. The one that came to the top of the pile, this is the one we're going to use last because this one we're going to use a couple of different ways that we haven't before. Um, and this is the one that we really want. This is decision time. If we haven't persuaded them by now, we need to uh, pull out all the stops. So same postcard, same uh, back, uh, different image, uh, social media post, all the same stuff, email, different image, same copy, right? Okay, so all of that to this point has been the same, but then we're going to do something slightly different on April 14th. And, uh, you know, because this is the last day that they can take advantage of this particular offer. So we're going to make sure that we do something animated or cool or fun or whatever. This might actually even be a video or, you know, in conjunction with something that, uh, you know, we spend a little bit more money on, make this a little bit more um, obvious and make it stand out. And uh, we put it in the same places where people have already been seeing it. Once again, we're establishing the pattern. We're not just doing random acts of marketing. We're, we're doing a a pattern that people are going to notice. And they're not going to notice every single piece of this pattern, but they're going to notice uh, the, the basics. And you know what sticks out to them hopefully will be the thing that convinces them. Okay? So once again, last day email. And honestly, this is what does it on every single campaign that we do is this last day email is what they reply to, um, having seen all of this stuff. Right? So that's very, very important. People think, oh, well, if they haven't bought by now, they're not interested. That's not true. They just are too busy to react to you. Okay, so questions about this campaign? Oh, Lots. I hope we have enough to get through these. <laughs> okay, the we've got about nine minutes left, so we'll hurry. It says, you don't have a price in your offer, at least not on a postcard. Why not? Okay. Um, we don't necessarily want to give them all the information on the postcard, and secondly, we're not looking for price shoppers. Um, this particular offer is for people who really um, are looking for something, looking for value. They're not looking for price. So the price is on the website, and if they go there, they will see it. But uh, we deliberately made the decision that it wasn't important enough to put on the postcard. Yeah, no, you, you uh, look at airplanes, for example, and you know if all these aircraft are within a certain number of dollars in the same model, different years, mm -hmm. you know you're not going to argue price. Mm -hmm. You're going to argue what is in it, on it, time on it, component times, etc. Exactly, and we want to actively <coughs> discourage, you know, the freebie seekers. Honestly, absolutely. Um, you know, we those are a lot of our our time and money goes into providing really great information. But at this point, we're looking for people who are willing to invest. So. So next, what goes on the landing page? What goes on the landing page? Um, the details of your offer, uh, especially the benefits of your offer. Uh, we've had the, the discussion about features versus benefits, and we don't have time to go into a whole lot of that right now. But basically, what difference is it going to make to your customer, whether they use the service or, or a competitor? Um, they're going to want to look at you know what's going to be different for them, how it's going to make their life better, uh, save them time, save them money, and so now, on. You say we've discussed it previously, you mean in a previous webinar. Oh, yeah, we've discussed <laughs> it in a previous <laughs> webinar. The features versus benefits yes, um, conversation. Yeah, so uh, should your landing page be on your website, or should it be standalone, or what? Excellent question. Um, it can be on your website. In fact, that's a good idea because you know then you have all of your toys like your Google Analytics and other things to see, um, you know, how many people visit versus how many people respond and so on. But you don't want to have any navigation on that page. The only thing they can do from that page is buy the product. <laughs> okay, that's their only option for something to do. Uh, you don't want them to navigate back into your website or be distracted by something else. I've experienced that. Right. Being distracted by something else? No. Not oh. being able to. There you go. You've been funneled. Uh -huh. They call it a sales funnel. Um, basically, once you get into that page, there is nothing to do except go to the bottom and click buy now, you know, or leave the page by, you know, getting out of your browser or something. So next, um, what's, what subject line do you use for your emails? The same or different every time? Oh, good question. Um, 
you do want that to be familiar and you do want to use the same key phrases, but you do want it to be different each time so that people think, um, you know, this is not a repeat of the same email, this is not a mechanical malfunction where I'm getting this over and over again. Uh, this is intended to be received by me more than once. Um, so change your um, subject line just a little bit each time, especially for that last one. You want to make sure that you have a last day uh, note on that last um, email subject line. So that was, nope, one more. Do you pay for social media advertising? Do you pay for social media advertising? Yes, I do. Um, and the reason is because then I can be more specific about who I'm targeting. Um, like I said, you can actually upload a specific list of customers that you want to receive an ad into Facebook and target just those people, and that's a heck of a lot cheaper than targeting the world uh, in general, right? Yes. Okay. But um, I also target people based on demographics, income level, um, you know, whether they like the um, Gulfstream page, you know, a lot, there's lots of ways that I can target people specifically if I pay for advertising. Uh, but I can't if I don't, so I think that's really helpful. Okay, so um, what we've been advertising in this campaign is our insider circle. And what this is, is it's a group that is uh, specifically for the folks that um, use our done-for-you services or do um, any kind of work with us. They can, of course, join uh, just the insider circle, whether or not uh, we're doing work for them, but most of them are customers or former customers for our uh, done-for-you services. And what we found is that they get a lot more out of associating with each other uh, than they do just from having us do a brochure for them or a website for them or, or anything else. And we want them to get together and we want them to talk to each other because we think that's really cool, uh, the collaboration that happens. Um, the very best value that we offer, you know, in the Insider Circle is our office hours. And this is the least expensive consulting that we do. Um, the Insider Circle is $279 a month, and with that, for the person that was asking what the price is, <laughs> um, for, for that, uh, that is the least expensive consulting that we do for anyone. And we schedule one office hour a month, and we can use that toward anything they like, if they want to work on their LinkedIn profile, if they want to work on their website, uh, if they want to work on a direct mail campaign like this one, um, if they're going to a trade show and they want to work on their 15 second uh, sales pitch, uh, you know, any of those things uh, we'll do with them. If they want to role play an upcoming sales call or sales presentation, uh, we'll do that with them. Whatever they need done uh, in those office hours is, is what we do. We also have a thing called our VIP Lounge, uh, which is a private Facebook group where our insiders can associate with each other. Um, a lot of them are now at, well, we're at Women in Aviation International in uh, Houston, I think. That was just before HAI, which is also in Houston. I thought that was Dallas, but whatever. Um, Fort Worth. Fort okay. Worth, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, they put a notice in the VIP lounge saying, you know, I'm in Fort Worth for the HAI, who else is here? Uh, they get to talk to each other and meet for coffee and, you know, do all kinds of things that they wouldn't otherwise uh, find a way to do. So, Bounce ideas off each other. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So you have a couple of postcards. You throw them both in here and say, you know, ask people which they like better. Uh, they're very responsive and very helpful. Um, you also get access to our briefing room, which is all of our webinars and uh, worksheets and tip sheets and other kinds of things that you have access to 24-7. Um, destinations, this is uh, the done-for-you products and services that we offer. Um, our insiders get priority, so if it is the week before NBAA and you need something done, if you're not an insider, you're probably not going to get us on the phone. That's right. But if you are an insider, you get priority scheduling for any of our services. Right? Yep. Okay. Um, projects. Uh, this is our project management software where we keep um, all of our files and things. So if you've ever worked with us, all of the recorded meetings and all of the files that we've used, all of the images and everything are kept in a place where you can get to them whenever you like. Um, we also have our book club discussion. Uh, we're currently reading Laura Hanley's Content That Converts, a very good business-to-business uh, book about you know creating content that works 
and we'll be talking about that the first week of April. Uh, the first Wednesday of the month we get together on a go-to meeting and talk about the book and how it applies or doesn't apply or how we've tried stuff that didn't work or whatever um, from the book. Okay, um, Hall of Fame is where you can meet our other insiders. Uh, we do a profile of each of our members and publish them on our website. Of course that gives them backlinks for search engine optimization and stuff and also people get to, to meet them. So questions on anything? Well, we're going to probably run over, so but we'll try to answer the questions. Can you add Facebook Live to this campaign? Oh, yeah. Um, that's actually a pretty good idea. You know, instead of doing Facebook um, targeting, we could do a Facebook Live video about the campaign that we're running. Uh, and some of the really ben good benefits about Facebook Live are the reach. Um, Facebook is really promoting video heavily right now because it's a new feature and uh, so you get much better reach uh, and also much better activity on a video than you do on a static ad. So we may want to replace uh, one of those ads with a, a Facebook Live video or add a Facebook Live video to the, the campaign. So that's a good idea. Glad you thought of it. Um, this is probably a repeat but Whatever. How much is the Insider Circle? How much is the Insider Circle? It's two hundred and seventy-nine dollars a month, uh, and that includes everything that we talked about. And how much time does it take? How much time does it take to be part of the Insider Circle? Um, we recommend spending um, an hour on Monday doing your marketing Monday. You know, whatever you're planning for the week, doing your sales calls. You know, other kinds of things. Webinar Wednesday, learning something new, uh, like today and then follow up Friday, spending an hour following up with your existing customers uh, and we, you know, send materials for all of those things. But it really depends on you, you know, what you're trying to accomplish. It shouldn't be anything above and beyond what you're normally doing and hopefully it will actually save you time as opposed to spending time, right? Exactly. Some of our members though are really um, very generous with their time to the other insiders and I think that actually works to everyone's benefit when that happens, right? Yes, yeah, so finally, if I join, will you help me create a campaign similar to this one? <laughs> <laughs> Good question. If, you, if I join, will you do it for me? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think that's going to happen, but... Uh... Right, exactly. Like I said, um, you know, the Insider Circle is, is one hour a month um, of office hours, and we'll use that for anything you like. So if you wanted us to go through your campaign with you, um, maybe help you brainstorm headlines, um, you know, search for photos, you know, whatever we can do to help you with that. If you wanted us to do the campaign for you, um, of course, we'd be happy to do that. That would be probably a consulting engagement um, where we'd design the pieces, write the cards, um, set up the emails, send those for you. You know, we can do a complete turnkey of that entire campaign but that would be a little bit beyond the scope of our uh, insider right. circle, right? Exactly. Okay. And that's probably the last. Yeah, we ran over time. So um, we really appreciate you joining us, and thank you so much for all of the very insightful questions. You guys make it much more fun than it would be otherwise. We really appreciate you coming, and uh, if there's anything that we can help you with, you can find us at uh, abci one Dot com, that's Alpha Bravo Charlie India number one dot com um, or call 702 987 1679 um, and that is ABCI, right? It certainly is. Okay. Have a great afternoon and thanks again for joining us. See ya. Ciao. You know you're cool.